A warm welcome again and welcome to Feeling Terrific. Um, today I have um, a great guest again. So I, it seems I have um, all the time great guests, but indeed it is a great guest. And um, it's uh, Sevinj. She's also um, a colleague of mine, but it's not about service now or being a recruiter. It's more about her journey. Her journey is quite interesting. Um, she moved from Azerbaijan to Dubai, from Dubai, if I'm not mistaken, to Germany. Correct. Oh, great. And um, yeah, now she's here and we will talk about um, her story and a uh, few things she learned along the way. So first, first, before I hand it over to Youssef, um, I'd like also to, to mention that it's no script again. So it's um, just another chat, um, another just a chat. And um, over to Youssef. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, just another chat is my favorite type of a chat. So <laughs> very much happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting. And can't believe from the ideation moment of the day when you told me, you know, I'm going to have a podcast here. We are actually recording the this conversation. So even though it took us like five reschedules, we finally made it. <laughs> we are flexible. We are flexible. <laughs> Talk about flexibility. Um, but yeah, I am very, very excited to be here as... Christian mentioned, I am from Azerbaijan, Baku, born and raised, studied there. And then literally on the next day of my graduation, when I turned, oh man, 21, yes. <laughs> God, it seems like ages now ago, 21, I moved to Dubai to start my career and just like embark on a journey, you know, to be um, brave and just really get out of Baku. Not that I didn't like it, but it just was like my chance for, for sure, like to live alone, to explore the world. So yeah, it's, it's been a while already, but super happy the way it ended up or not ended up. Oh my God. No, I mean, it's still going on, <laughs> but the way it's developing, let's say. I'm glad to hear that, but maybe let us have a, um, a look um, further at, at the beginning. Right. So what, I don't know. Do you remember when, when the moment, or did you feel the moment when it hit you that you had the realization, mm. okay, I want to move. I want to move out. Yeah. I, I think it sounds sad to a, a bit, but like, I always felt like kind of like, I, I don't fit to the society I was born in. Not that just there's something wrong with it. It's just, I always wanted more. And the, the fact that born and raised in one country and then to be happy to just live all your life in the one place just doesn't sit well with me. It just, there's so many places in the world. Why would you just to stay in one? And uh, I, I guess I always wanted to kind of try it out to, to go and travel. I mean, I was born in like, let's say, medium to low kind of uh, income level of family. So traveling before or like traveling when you were at school, there was no an option. So like my first travel actually happened when I turned 19. So the money that I saved up for like not 19 years, like I wasn't earning from five, one year old, but like pretty much from the age of 10 or so, I was started saving some, some money just to try, a, you know, my, my travel abroad to see the world, to understand. And, and I remember this is like a, such a flashback right now, but when I was a kid, we used to every summer go to our, together with my cousins to the summer house. And there was always a discussion. And I was like, what, seven, five years old. There was a, the word that they would use, like, you know, abroad. Mm. And, 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 and in, you, in Russian, they say this word like the granitsy. So like they would always say like when everything outside the Azerbaijan is like abroad. <laughs> so abroad things are different abroad. Like it's not like certain country. So in my child memory, five or six years old, abroad was a country. Abroad okay. was that idea of a place where you go and things are different. So up until like, I mean, like a good age, I mean, until like, I obviously, I, I realized I went to school. I, I realized that abroad doesn't really mean a country. It's just everything outside. And there are so many abroad places. But this is like one of the first memories, I think, when I've realized when I was a child that, okay, there are places like abroad where you can go and experience and things are different there. So I guess that, that's like my first memory of understanding, like, I want to try what it is outside. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really kind of a intrinsic motivation then, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, right? I, th I think so. I, I think it, 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 it's in those conversations that I just was exposed to. Like I wasn't, 
plan to be part of those conversations. It's when the adults were speaking and I was just like a curious kid who would just sit and try to act like she understands. But just the certain words, certain discussions just stuck with me that, okay, there, is, there are opportunities outside the realm you live in. So there are things that are, because I don't think when you're five or six years old, you really comprehend the concept of there are other countries, there are borders, there are people that are not Azerbaijanis that speak different language and live abroad, mm. let alone uh, working, right? So it's more of just that romanticized version of a world or a society that that is just different. And obviously, as growing up in Azerbaijan, it's the post-Soviet Union country. It was 90s and early 2000s, right? Like things were still improving. We weren't as good of a or developed country as we are right now. So you would always be like looking at the, everything comes like, you know, from the Europe at this or US. So that was always that. And and I guess it's, it's the will to find something different that's better, that kind of pushed me or stuck with me that try something. How did it come uh, moving to Dubai then? How was uh, yeah. how did it <laughs> moving to Dubai? What's uh, the well, thinking behind? <laughs> very good, very good. Well, I can tell you one thing, it involved a lot of negotiation skills <laughs> and negotiation skills with my mom. <laughs> that has been like a biggest deal. So I think I, I started planting the seed that I want to work abroad, I want to travel or at least leave for a while abroad um, from 18, more or less. And then like I went for the first travel myself when I was 19 and then to, uh, slowly, slowly 20. So by the end of my graduation, I, I kind of sat and then asked myself like, okay, so now I'm graduating. Either I'm going to start working here. And again, I love Azerbaijan and I love Baku. And by no means, whatever I'm saying here is just because it's it's not good there. But it's just, I wanted to understand like if I'll stay here and start working, the chances of me getting just complacent with the fact that, okay, I have everything, I have work are higher. So I, I realized that I will lock myself and with every single year that passes on, it's going to be harder for me to leave the place. I'm so comfortable because why would you, you know, I already had the job back then from like 19, I was earning, I was working into shit. So, and, and I realized if I don't do it now, it mm. will be like, okay, I will not do it then later. Then it's going to be harder for my mom to let go of me, you know, more and more. So I started kind of planting the seed from the first, like fourth year of my university that, okay, maybe, you know, I'll try just for a year and then, okay, where? Back then, I was working in this international organization called Isaac that allowed you to obviously travel for one year and work in that location for a year. So I was like, where do I go? Do I go like Morocco or, or Egypt or, or this like a cool countries that we or maybe even like Canada. It's a, like the world of my oyster, but not for my mom. Obviously, it was all about, OK, how far is that country? What is the time difference? How safe it is? Oh, you're, you're, you're alone living. Oh, my God. But what neighbor says, you know, oh, my God, this is a, but like it was a lot of just like, convincing. So we kind of haggled and came to a compromise that Dubai was the safest location, the closest location, easy to travel. It was still a Muslim country. And uh, my cousin, who's been the first one out of all of us to go abroad. So the idea, okay. yeah, she also gave her blessing saying like, yeah, she's been to Dubai and it's a nice place. And I mean, I'm talking again, like she's been in early 2000, right? So it's still a developing even for Dubai period. So for me, it was like, okay, cool. Well, Never been there, but from the pictures that I'm Googling, it looks like awesome. I remember I put this as a wallpaper for my laptop, you know, for a year. I was visualizing it that I'm going to move there. I was posting different photos on Facebook back then and Instagram wasn't a big deal. <laughs> you know, it was like 2016. I mean, Instagram was already, but not as much. And yeah, I just uh, applied for the job, got selected. I knew already in March that, okay, the next day of my graduation, I literally wore the cap of a, um, someone who graduates and then it threw it and next day I flew. And then and I left. And, then and that was for a year. So I promised my mom, I'm going to come back, mom. It's just a year. It's been what, eight years? <laughs> I just want to say it, it had been quite extended, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm like, every time the deadline is being extended. So I'm like, it's been eight years that mom, I promise I'm coming. 
<laughs> okay, so 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 maybe two things. So you can be grateful to have your your cousin, right? Without 100%. her, it wouldn't be possible. And the second thing is, I think it's also um, yeah, can be put also in a more uh, generic or general way. It was kind of a, a, a strategic approach, right? Yeah, I you guess. Seat, you did research. You used your network, mm. if you can say it like that. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. Look, the, this part of organization and that um, Isaac that I've been part of, it's a non-governmental and volunteering organization. I wasn't getting paid or anything for four years. I've been working there as an extracurricular to build up my network to because it was the one of the coolest organization in Azerbaijan where you speak only in English. So, you know, it was like an, a little, oh my God, because in Azerbaijan already society kind of unfortunately divided now not as much like russian speaking uh, or Azeri speaking and then this is with all oh, they're like english speaking cool kids type of uh, i mean back then you thought it's cool now i realize obviously it's not as cool as speaking your own language but you know when you're True. growing yeah. up and then 17 you seem like oh yeah this is like a, the coolest thing so yeah i kind of did my research i realized that yes this this is the easiest for me location to go and it was honestly about the chance, like whatever you offer me, I would have taken it because it was more about like, I want to do it. And I just, anything that comes my way, I'm, I'm going to be like accepting it. Like I went on my own savings. I wasn't promised that much even salary. It was more of like a salary enough to cover your accommodation here and there food. Like it's not to earn money. It was literally to go for a year to build from the zero that organization, to work with an HR sphere as well. So I was doing a lot of recruitment, event management, marketing, how I end up in recruitment afterwards, right? So it was, a, and everyone, and I remember my university friends were like, you're crazy working for free for some organization and now moving even abroad, you know? And like, why? But like, in normal mind, like you have, you, you have to have a why if you do yeah. something like that. Yeah, and you know, like I, 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 I think it was primarily. I mean, obviously, the cause of that organization, which was literally about building the leadership experiences and giving this leadership opportunities for people abroad through cross-cultural exchange programs. So we would go on exchange internship programs for six weeks. And that's how I went to Poland first time when I was 19. So I, I kind of got to, I've tried the product itself. I've done the six weeks living in Poland. I've realized what does it mean like to live in one, uh, you know, house with 10 people from different countries and then teaching your language to kids in Poland that don't even know what, I, what is Azerbaijan is, you know? So I, I realized that how important is that product and the value of cross-cultural exchange and like mm. how much of you can learn. Like there is so much more and so many other people that are so different to you that you can really interact. And that was for me like, yeah, I mean, money didn't, didn't matter back then. It was more about getting that opportunity because I, mean, I didn't even know what to do with that money back then. Like for me, I was 21. I was more about travel, seeing the world, having fun with friends, you know, and that's it. So, and, and really like learning and getting some, your social circle. That was like the, like, uh, like your, the currency back then, at least for me, that was like my connections, my social circle, my friends yep. and what, what mattered and that was like whoa place to be you know uh, Dubai I know obviously you can make a lot of money there I mean we can talk about that. it was like a very I didn't realize I was like oh wow you can actually earn you know like after a year I don't want to jeopardize your agenda obviously you know but like I mentioned we, 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 we don't have one but uh, yes kind of <laughs> But like after a year, like I was like, okay, I like it here. I want to stay. So I started mm -hmm. applying for different internships. I literally, we had an event and uh, organized with this organization, Isaac. And Neste was for one of the sponsors. So, uh, and it was also NGO. So Neste was providing different food meals for the kids in need. And they were sponsoring our event that was bringing the awareness and raising awareness about it. And HR manager was uh, one of the main sponsors and spokespersons in the event. And after the event, I literally just went up to her. I had nothing to lose. I was like, look, I've organized this event. 
I've pitched it to you. You know who I am. I will do any type of an HR work. I'm really passionate about it. You will get someone who is extremely dedicated, who is not afraid to lose, who, who will do everything you want. I just want an opportunity and I'm very passionate about HR. If there is anything you have in your organization, just let me know. I had nothing to lose, right? And my contract, the kind of contract that we had with Isaac was finishing in a month or so. Mm -hmm. And she just gave me her, you know, the business card saying, like, just email me with your CV. Let's see. Yeah. And that's it. That's how I ended up joining, you know, like she's passed my CV to someone else that someone else picked it up. And then like Nestle, they invited me for an internship. And <laughs> yeah, you like, mean, yeah. Sometimes you just have to take uh, ownership of your own success, right? Or maybe not success, but destiny. <laughs> and it takes a lot of um, courage. And I think um, what you've just described shows all of it yeah i mean back then for me like i looked at it as desperate you know uh, if someone would have asked like to be i would be like you know i have nothing to lose i'm desperate i don't want to go back yet i want to still experience and i'm just gonna do everything it takes right so you were like the chances of me getting like i mean they were there but i also wanted to start somewhere big somewhere nice where like i can have a international i didn't want to start like in a small arab company or a local company i wanted to have still that exposure and also for the company that has support these initiatives right so this also had a lot of this kind of initiatives regarding the sustainable development goals which i was very passionate about so they were supporting that and i was like wow like th there are values that align and I went for an interview. Remember, it was an internship in Syria, right? I mean, back then, one thing in Isaac that teaches you, like they also use a lot of big titles. So that my title was like uh, members vice president of talent acquisition. So it's basically like a talent director for that NGO, right? So I went with the title in my CV, like a the, the director of talent acquisition, I remember. And like the, the manager of the whole factory was interviewing me. And like after the interview, he told me, it's like, you no, know, we were laughing. Like there's a director coming for an inter <laughs> interview. <laughs> It was like the most humbling, humbling moment in my life. Like it was just such a realization that things that seemed so big back then, like in, in Isaac, in an internship, like obviously for someone who's been 20 years, manages like HR manager of a factor of 500 people. And there's someone in the CV comes with this like a gigantic title of a director. And like for an internship, I it, it was a humbling moment for me to realize. Yeah, like no matter... What I've achieved so far, still haven't achieved anything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, this is a really good um, good story, and also points out that um, yeah, almost everything is relative, right? And it depends on the perspective. Um, when you when you move from Azerbaijan to Dubai mm -hmm. and then also um, to to Germany, right? I mean, it's not just kind of a yeah cultural cultural change, right? But also when it comes to the language. So how is that going? Can, can we start uh, speaking uh, German now? Ja, stimmt. Ja, wir können auch auf Deutsch sprechen, aber für mich, das ist nicht sehr um, bequem. Let's say I'm not very comfortable yet, but I'm, 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 I'm reaching that level. Look, so <laughs> another thing, I mean, I, I feel like everything I've done in my life, especially my university years, kind of led to where I am and who I am right now. And mm -hmm. like, I'm very, very grateful to the version of Sivinj that was between the age of 17, like, and 25, uh, because right now the version that I'm right now, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to kind of get comfortable with her. It's a different, it, it's an adult version of me and mature, which has different, total different priorities right now. But who, whatever version I was there, whoever that was, you know, I don't know. I'm so grateful because She's done everything. Like she literally, it's not just hungry, like, you know, hungry for success. It just, whatever you gave her way, she would have taken as an opportunity. So I entered university and then I knew again, because of my cousin who went abroad, that there is another university in Azerbaijan, one of the rarest universities that offers dual dip uh, diploma degree with the Austrian University. 
So I, from the second year, I've done my IELTS, I've improved my English. So then I entered that university so that I end up having dual degree, two um, uh, diplomas, and also finish Austrian university that would count for European education, which is counts, right? And I was like, okay, wow, that will bring me one step closer. If I ever want to apply to Europe, I have it, right? So I've done like literally from 8 a.m. Uh, classes till 6, and then I, I went for work from like 7 p.m. in the restaurant till 2 a.m., slept. I don't remember my first year of university. I slept all of it during the classes because I had to work night shift, and I'm not the only one. My friends as well, they were doing like everyone was hustling, you know, literally hustling. We, we had to hustle and, and try to find some opportunities for money because we're students, because we, we have don't, in, don't have income, but also learning. So I kind of got introduced to let's say, German-speaking culture through that Austrian university to German language. I've taken some classes and courses, but I mean, we never learned <laughs> properly, unfortunately, which I don't, that may be the only thing I'm not grateful for that version of myself, for, for neglecting my German classes and saying like, I already speak English, Azerbaijani, Turkish, Russian. They I have don't... to be sacrificed along yeah. the way, right? Yeah, I literally said, like, I can't, I can't deal with it right now. Like, I don't have motivation. I'd rather earn money or, or work. So, yeah, I've neglected that education. So, and I end up uh, just joining. It's hard for me to say it's my work, like the hard work, because I still believe there was a, such a huge part of a luck finding job opportunity in Germany for a company that from Dubai moved me and without actually German language. And yeah, I've ended up here. Now I'm learning. It is getting there. It's better. It's, it's, it's still a, a, like back then when I moved to Dubai also, I was speaking English, but I mean, it wasn't by no means at the level that, you know, I'm comfortable right now. I was making a lot of mistakes, like, you know, and a very, very simple mistake as well when it comes to like a conjugation of the verbs and, you know, like feel and felt you sometimes you would confuse or I, I had an accent, obviously I'm coming with like Russian language influence to my words. So I remember I would say some words like burger. I wouldn't say burger. I would say burger, which is like, an, and my friends would laugh like, you know, they are like, oh, you're like, you know, what is this? What do you mean? And, and I mean, it took to some extent, like I had to accept that. Okay. Yeah. I have flaws in my language. Maybe I need to improve it. Not by no means about accent, but more about like just your language presents you. But right now I'm still on the journey of learning German. It's getting there. I'm having some colleagues like Christian <laughs> or Karen that are helping me improving. But yeah, I love this language still. It's, yeah, it's... I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, uh, though, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, from time to time, we need external factors, yeah. whatever they might be, to being pushed outside of our comfort zone and so that we can really develop, right? 100%. I, I think I am still not there yet from external factors. I do have them 100% and that's why I've reached the level I am. So like I'm on a very comfortable intermediate level that I can handle myself in any, you know, crisis situations. I can handle myself in a hotel, restaurant, I don't know, hospital or, or supermarket. I can handle my documents, but then anything that is above to that level, I'm still not there yet, purely from the work perspective. I mean, there are some other priorities, but I am planning, I mean, making Germany my home. So it's, it's. I mean, at least that's the goal, right? Let's see, right? Like if, if I don't decide to try a new country, I mean, look, don't take this word for granted. Every winter I question my decision. It's online, <laughs> it's online. <laughs> every, every winter I'm like, I do to myself? Why on earth did I move from Dubai to here? I mean, it gets dark at like four in November. It's minus something right now. And I mean, people weren't the nicest when I moved here. <laughs> you know, it's Munich. It's very conservative. And it's, it's, it's also the population is a bit old here compared to like uh, it's matured and aged and amount of people that are not very open sometimes for expats is higher compared to Dubai, which is basically expat only. And yeah. that, that was like a huge deal. Plus I, I moved in uh, November 19 and then in six months COVID hit. So I spent almost like two years 
indoors yeah, or just like with some people from work. So my interaction also with Germans were quite limited. And if it was, it was with an overworked supermarket, Rebe, you know, cashier who was like extremely angry and would just like check out all your things and like get them out of here. Because, like, I, I understand, like, you know, and uh, the first time I wore, I learned word Twitter, I, I think it was in Zara, right? So she was like very angry and you know how like people not um, shoppers in Zara and the people at the cashier, they always like, oh, we don't care about your type of uh, chicken. And then she came to me, uh, I was checking out something and she's like, tutor? And I'm like, what the hell is the word tutor? <laughs> sounded so weird to me and I was like and I'm like I don't understand what do you want lady if I just want to pay and leave like you know and then she showed me but then I learned like I will never forget this word ever right and I've been pushed to so many you know, all, all this kind of um like in the taxi the guy would kind of the driver turn and ask me something I'm gonna and I'm like yeah, 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 my address, you know, like, back then, that was, I'm like, just, just take me there, and he's like, but no, no, I'm gonna, I'm like, what do you mean, he's like, do you like the AC, I'm like, ah, okay, <laughs> yeah, like, there are different, obviously, situations that happen to me, that I'm like, okay, fine, I will never forget this word, I will understand, and they're forcing me, obviously, still, till today, every time I'm gonna call some, calling call center is the worst fear of mine, <laughs> talk to someone on the phone to fix something because you start hello I should go speak in the English today nine kind English <laughs> and then you are like <laughs> like okay I'm like maybe it would have been better like you know if you just say like sorry if you're speaking with because the moment they hear you saying can you please speak English or can you speak they're like no no you speak whatever like try it out you know and every time it's just like the worst fear of mine like the google translate i put all the sentences and i'm like okay yeah as a you have a problem and then, and then you go like yeah it's improving now now i can wing it a lot more you know but the uh, answer to the problem you're having yeah. <laughs> oh man it's like i do all possible ways not to call a customer service. Like, if there is a way to solve it by email, or maybe I can just, like, you know, go to the office or something. But then when I have to call the customer service, it just, yeah, it's it's fun. I bet, I bet, and I don't want uh, want to, yeah, take your place uh, in this in this case. Um, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you when you uh, moved moved to Germany, right? Um, mm -hmm. What were your thoughts, and how did it, um, yeah? How did it came out at the end? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember you asked me this question as well in the interview. Like Christian was interviewing. It is. He was like, like why? <laughs> like why would you? And you were not the only one. Like everyone was like, why would you move here? Like nothing wrong with meaning. It's an awesome, awesome place. But why? Like like it, 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 because it was a very, to some extent, random decision i would say uh and i till today i would say it was a random i mean being from a country where the passport maybe not the strongest uh on the work arena you don't have a luxury to choose and when the opportunity comes knocking your way you either take it and be grateful or you just waste it and for me it was just like oh my god like I literally applied to one job abroad. That was like my phase when I was kind of getting like, mm, is Dubai the place? Should I try something new, you know? And my cousin, over there, she's been living in Paris. My other cousin, my sister moved, you know? They all kind of lived already in Europe and I was still far from them in that regard uh, from a family influence. And they were like, yeah, try some roles. And I applied to that one job. And but I still remember, you know, now I'm talking and I'm remembering there was an email of an HR manager mentioned. And um, he said, if you have questions, please approach. And I, and I was already in, in recruitment for like four or five years. And I knew, and I was like, wow, that's different. Like, you know, normally people, the recruiters don't leave their <laughs> emails to contact me because they're going to be overflown. Plus it's Dubai. But I was like, let me take, I mean, what am I going to lose, right? I emailed him and I asked him like, hey, you know, I'm looking for this opportunity. I know it's very random from Dubai. You're looking in Munich, but there are languages that I speak mentioned in the job uh, description. Would you like to have a call? And he responded, you know, being a very, very good HR manager. 
and we had a discussion and I, I wore my like a confidence suit, you know, I was like, I know this, I know that, you know, I, I wore that like a director of talent acquisition <laughs> mindset, you know, and I went and I was like, you know, I done this, I done the campus recruitment, I worked in those big companies, which I did. I mean, I was by, at that time working already in BCG, which is like a top consulting firm and, and I guess, I mean, he liked my pitch. He liked the idea that I sold kind of my uh, skills to him. And then I had another interview in Dubai for face-to-face. And they were just like, they offered me. And I was like, what just happened? Take a moment. Brief, brief. Yeah. I was like, what just happened? So I wasn't comp- like. I was doing it just for the sake of doing it. I always tell guys, just interview. What is the worst thing that's going to come out? Like it's the worst fear of a recruiter that, you know, you have this kind of candidate that at the end of the day, it's going to say like, no, I don't want the offer and out. But as a candidate, yeah. Like what is the worst thing? I mean, there is always going to be companies that's hiring. So just try and see what, what's going to come out. So I was doing it purely out of interest to prove myself that I can get it, you know? <laughs> that was again. Um, if I would, yeah, I think if there, if like an opportunity is something like super crazy, awesome, that I'm like, yes, I want this regardless of the location. Yes, I would do abroad. But if it's in Munich, I mean, it would be wrong to say my, my service now in for you. <laughs> but yeah, I would do it. I mean, if there is something that I really like in Munich, that so like, like literally when I read it and I say that it's me, because back then when I was applying to this company, it was more driven. I, the role was cool, but it was more driven by location. I was like, okay, it's, it's, it's a cool role. It's a step up for me. And it, it's Munich, you know, it's Germany. I've done some research. I've never been to Germany as an exclaimer before moving. And I've never, like, I've, I knew Oktoberfest, you know, Munich, I, like the cliche things that, you know, and Drindel or, or stuff, but nothing much. And pretzel. And yeah, I just, I just realized that, okay, I can't say no. And that's when it hit me like, okay. What do I do? I mean, I had like one hour call with all my cousins with my sister. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? You know, should I take it? You know, and they're like, and everyone's like, they are bringing you from Dubai. You don't speak German. They don't mm-hmm. know you that so well to work for HR. I mean, I love my sphere, like the industry, but it's not also, the, I'm not like a, you know, in, in the coding or software or I'm not an engineer. There are a lot more HR professionals in the local market that you can actually find. And then there are closer, like if they're going through all that hassle to sponsor your visa for a recruitment specialist role at the end of the day, why would you say no? And the, the salary was also fine. I mean, it was still less. It was still way less than what I was earning in Dubai. Okay. So like that was my biggest, like, should I accept it or not? I mean, I, I had no idea how do you pay tax. <laughs> that. And like when I did that, the, the conversion, I had like kind of like a piece of me died inside. And the, 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 the fear went, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I accepting it? And the, but I think at the end of the day, I just said like, what is the worst thing, as I always say, that's going to happen out of this experience? If I really, really don't like it, like hate it there, in a year, year and a half max, but even year, you can always come back and say like, and you will come back with additional experience. It's going to be already the mm-hmm. European experience. That, and you can always come back to Dubai because there are always opportunities, a lot more options there. So that could be the, the, the worst thing that will happen that you go back. And I already had good relationship with my employer. So they were always like, yeah, like, you know, it doesn't work out. So it was very random. It was more of like, you don't get to choose when opportunity comes your way, you take it, you try it and you see, and I just don't know. And within like five months I was gone. Like I packed my bag. Like I packed, like, I remember when I moved, I moved with hundred kg. <laughs> You know, fancy stuff that you have to wear. I mean, I was working in a consulting firm. You had to wear like a bit more fancy stuff. It wasn't that chill, low-key Germany when you, you actually nobody cares about these things that I cared back then. Like a high, I don't own high heels anymore. <laughs> you know, the, the things, it's, it was a different environment. And I feel today, like, I just was on an autopilot. Mm. Like, I just, okay, visa, I did this, I did that, did that, I resigned, I got everything, I cleared out my bank account, okay, I moved, huh? I've checked the day before, I started, and I was like, oh, I'm in Germany. 
I, I'm, I'm wondering, did you feel, did you feel pressure? I mean, um, they uh, brought mm. you to, to Germany yeah. in the role and so on. Did, did you feel any kind of pressure or was it like, mm, yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> of course, hundred percent, there was that a need to prove yourself that, okay, they went through so much of a hassle to bring you all the way. And now you have to perform, you have to prove yourself. That's A. B, it's also like I have to prove myself that I can do it. I mean, you praise yourself that you're brave, that you're fearless, you can do these things. And this was the first time that I was like, okay, am I going to quit? Because I, I mean, I had, first six months, I hated it here, you know, like I really didn't like it. The job was good. I liked my colleagues, but it wasn't to that extent. Like I hated my life. Like, honestly, I really didn't like my first six months here, even up to a year. It was very, it was dull. It was dark. I didn't have friends at all. I was coming from a circle of more than 100 friends. Like every weekend I had something to do to like nothing to do. It was winter as well. I didn't have money that much. I'm sorry. It was like to... depressing a little bit. Yeah, it was depressing. I mean, honestly, it was depressing. I wasn't like, I mean, I didn't have that much. I wasn't earning that much for me to save also. And, and I mean, because I'm kind of also on my own since like age of 20 or so, for me, saving is a huge aspect. Like, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm not that, uh, I'm not the Gen Z yet. <laughs> kind of, I will not be like, but a millennial who is having this boomer's attitude. Like you have to still save. You have to have a bank account, the money under the <laughs> blanket or so mattress. But for me, it's important to have that security because there's no one that I can go like, Hey, you know, Baba, <laughs> there's all this, you know, girl, my dad or something that can help me. I'm on my own, which I'm totally fine with that idea. I have never feared that, but it's more of like, okay, so what do I do to secure myself and to, to hold my ground? So it was a, yeah, that weird period when I went like, what am I doing with my life? But I, there was a bigger purpose to it. And there is that I am still pursuing to, to be a part of a society that still challenges me till today on a day to day basis that I don't really, not like I don't fit. No, I think I fit quite well to most of the norms of it. I do like the way the society works. I do like that they are very, and you, you say it's a stereotype, but still about like being organized, having that ordnung. It's actually something I appreciate. The, like this uh, ordnung is important thing. It, it takes certain adjustment, but then if you have that, within you, if you separate your trash properly, if you do your taxes on time, if you really respond to and, and pay your bills on time, if you, you know, you have rights and no one says like, oh, you're an expert. Like you, you have rights, you can get things done. I've never had like almost very rarely, maybe it's my good experience, like appointment canceled like a day before or two hours before, or if I can book something like a three months ahead of time and I don't need to follow up on and make sure that no one's going to kind of can like, things, people are reliable, you know, if they promise, they, they are straight to your face, you know, not like if they don't like you, but like, if they want to get to know you, they will get to know you, but if they don't, they also don't. So there are certain things, of course, things I don't like that are also here, like bureaucracy as everyone. And, and, but I mean, you take it, you know, like, it just like, you can't, either you change your environment or you change your environment, right? So I'm trying to change the environment by adjusting myself, but also influencing to things rather than changing it and just saying like, screw it, I'm living, you know? It, it was also the idea of, is it gonna be the first time I'm giving up? Is oh, that, 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 that's interesting, isn't it? When, yeah. When you, you, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was how, like, is Germany why, gonna- Why did you decide not giving up? I don't think it's a good trait of mine, but, it's just, again, it's from childhood. It's in kind of in, in your brain that giving up, giving up is like associated with a failure, right? So it's very black and white that if I give up, then I'm not realized that there is something that I can't do. And for me, giving up is like betraying myself for what I believe I am, which is resilient, doesn't give up. And yeah, persuasive. And if I, like, if you made this decision, then own it, you know? And for me, like, I, I, 
it's it's important. Like if I made this decision, I have to own it because that was my. No one forced me to move here. No one made me. No one asked me. You know, it was all me at the end of the day, right? Like no matter who, even if ten people said like move there, at the end of the day, it was I can't blame others for the decision I've taken. So for me, it was like you have to own it. You know, otherwise, why did you take that decision? Like it, this mindset. It's, it's a tough mindset. I don't, I, I can't say that it's a very self-loving to some extent. At times it's a bit of a, obviously you have to not give up, but let go of things that don't work. But for me, it was just like, no, like it, this can't be it that you just can't adapt to the new environment because you, you've done it so much for so many people. What you can't just, you know, break the code here and figure out what, what you like or find for yourself like you know things that you like or enjoy here and and if you're struggling because you don't speak this language then you can learn it you know at the end of the day if you don't like it so that's what i did that i've reached okay i've taken the evening classes and i've reached that level that i'm comfortable that i don't feel okay like if someone comes to me like you know tomorrow and like and stops me and asks, i can answer you know i can manage or and also kind of adapt to the mindset that if i don't speak this language to that it's still okay i mean you still speak like my value is not estimated at the level of German that I know because yeah. I still know so many <laughs> more other languages and there are so much more. And, but for me, like to some extent at times, at least at the beginning, I was feeling like, mm, if he doesn't speak, you're like, um, you know, like um, not, not so intellectual or so like, I don't know. Like I had this weird mindset that I'm still working on. It's still something that I need to improve. I haven't reached that level. Like, but for me, it was important to like, if you're part of the society, you gotta speak it at some level, you know, I'm not, my, my goal is never to speak it as a native. My goal is never to lose my accent. That makes me unique. Uh, it's, it's more about being at the level that I'm comfortable. So if tomorrow, because it also limits you, right? I mean, if tomorrow, if I want to work for a firm that only wants me to work in German, I can't really do it. I don't think I want to do it either because I just don't feel that I'm at that level of I comfort. I wouldn't uh, want it either, so yeah. Yeah, like, and I'm not at that level of a comfort with that language from an intimate point of understanding. Maybe I will reach it, but I want to be able to have that option. Hmm. Like, I want to have the, be able to choose it, like, to have the option, but then say, no, I don't want to choose it. Not that because I'm kind of limited due to my own inability of pursue a language. Yeah, no, no, I, I totally, um, totally know what you mean. And I think, um, having this kind of approach or, or mindset or whatever name you, you want to use, it's very important because, um, as you, as you mentioned, or as your story describes it, you have to be flexible. You have to be adaptable to whatever situation might come. Right. Mm. And, um, yeah maybe maybe one last question from my yeah. side um what kind of few words would you choose to describe what you learned so far moving from azerbaijan to dubai and then to germany mm -hmm. yeah well one thing that's been in my mind <laughs> i don't know like so to some extent i think it it, it takes a certain and it's not like I'm cool or I'm different from others, right? But it takes a certain type of a personality, a certain type of a mindset, a certain type of a, I don't know, crazy gene in you, I don't know, but like to be fearless. Hmm. And, and then just like a kid, right? Like, that's why I'm saying like, I'm so jealous of that younger self because she was way more fearless than where I am right now because I have a lot more obligations right now, right? Like, and... And I, I can't really like just say like, ah, whatever, I'll pack my stuff and go. Like, I can't, I really can't. Like, you know, there are small obligations that I have at least now, you know, I have things that are holding me. So, and, and when you look at the, you go to ski, I'm so jealous. Like ever, I see that three-year-old barely knows how to pronounce even a mama. And then here just like skiing and going, and I am here like a standing, like a, I don't know, like an elephant on, on the ski and try and afraid even to move just purely because I have that fear developed in me that, oh my God, what if I fall? And if I, and my, my biggest fear, what if I break my hands or fingers? I can't type or something happens to my face that I have to speak to candidates. You know, I have this weird fear that, and it's just stupid, right? Like, I mean, this can happen crossing the road. Of course, the chances for skiing are actually higher, but anyways. So 
I would say fearless, definitely, like in and, and a fearless journey. It's also kind of do it. There's no good. I mean, you can do it even at the age of 40. I don't believe that there is a certain age you should do it. But if you have a chance to do it early on, to try it on, because what is the worst thing that's going to happen? Like we sometimes think like, ah, oh, this is going to be awful if I have, but no, like even now, like it's not like I want to do it, but if I have to, have to, have to go back to Azerbaijan, I don't treat it anymore as like, this is the end of my life. I know I can build my life there from scratch. Yes, maybe my network is not as strong, but I already, like, I still have people. I'm at the end of the day coming from an awesome experience from Dubai, Middle East and Germany for so many, like a big companies behind my name. So like I can find the job, I can manage myself. So what is the worst thing that's going to happen to you? You know, like you kind of need to take it a bit easy because things, I mean, we, in, in Azerbaijan, there is a word like, it means that there is no solution only to death. Like, you know, it, it's just the death. Like you can't really fix it. Everything else is solvable. So nothing that that's bad, that's going to happen that you can't really take it. And, and, and yeah, like I would say that these are at least two words for sure. And, and honestly, like maybe it's not, yeah, like as a word, like, don't think that if you are born in one place, you have to stay there or you have to stick with it and, and, and you have no option. Of, I, maybe it's a bit of privileged opinion. Of course, like people that are a lot more in need. I mean, we're not talking here about like in Afghanistan or like in Africa or, you know, but if you are slightly a bit more in a society where you have the option at least to travel, to visit, do it, you know. It's, I, I still, I think these are the only type of people that like born, raised and don't even have, or traveled, but they're still like, no, like one place where I am, it's the best because you never know what you don't know. And, and that's something I learned from my previous company, you know, where they always say, you never know what you don't know until you've seen that. I've seen until you know what you don't know, you never know what it is that you're missing out. And that's why they say the smartest people are the one that knows the least because they know that there is so much of what they know they still don't know. And, and, and that's how I would describe for myself, you know, this journey and things that I never knew I will end up the way I am right now. And I will be working in like one of the top biggest companies, having like an amazing experience when I was moving and I was having the depression period, you know, I, I was like, it was a really bad time for me in Germany. And I was like on the verge of, going back or doing something, you know, not to be in this like a state to, to kind of never giving up to having that, like, what is the worst thing that's going to happen if I stay here and to have that fearless mindset that let me try it, let me see. And then we'll, we'll see, you know? Yeah. And I think, um, we, we are glad that you took the courage at the time. So we have, uh, you now in our team. So that's really great. <laughs> Maybe, so. <laughs> maybe, um, yeah, over to you for the last words. Hmm. For me, uh, you know, the, the, the journey that I'm having right now, it, it's a new one. It's, it's definitely like, I think I'm entering that proper adult adulthood right now more and more because I'm no more that kind of, um, sometimes I back, I say like, I, I look back and I, I miss that CV inch. I miss that, you know, a bit of a craziness. I was like, come and like the center of attention, like cheers up or bowl of emotions. Like I, I've, I've taught myself also the, the work, like to be a bit more reserved to manage my emotions and, 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 and to be the version that I want to be in the corporate life, let's say, and, but still trying to keep myself that version of me in my private life, at least for sure. And I, I just want to kind of wish that everyone has had that realization of never losing that inner version of themselves that, and, and never have that, uh, I, I won't, like, I want to be like, I was Christian five years ago, a Christian, like that, that's my goal right now. Like what I'm working on is just like, no matter what, like not to lose that childishness of within mm -hmm. me that helped me to reach where I am because with, with the more obligations that I'm having, the more life, the more expectations, like it's very easy to lose the sight of it. And, and, and then you just not you anymore. 
and, and, and then you don't like the environment and you start actually complaining about the environment or the things that they are surrounding you rather than just reconnecting with yourself or who you are. So I think for me, it's that, what is that one uncomfortable conversation with yourself that you keep postponing? It's to always having that. Thank you for the last words, uh, Zivinj. Very deep ones. Uh, I like it. And uh, hope to see you soon. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for inviting me. I hope you have many more awesome chats on your journey as well. I'm very, very proud of you for doing this. Very supportive of this. And this is also motivates me every time I see you doing this. Like a piece of me is like, this is so cool what he's doing. You know, maybe I should do something, you know. But I was like, okay, relax. You have other priorities in this life. So. <laughs> but I am very, very proud of you. And I wish you all the best with this podcast and many other initiatives that you have because you deserve it. Thank you. And before I'm going to cry, thank you. Thank and goodbye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs>